Hello, this is the final tutorial for running Continuous Change Detection and Classification, or CCDC, on Google Earth Engine. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the land cover and land cover change application for creating land cover maps at specific dates in addition to maps of change. The link to this application can be found in the video description below. This is part of the OpenMRV suite of tutorials. So in the previous tutorial, we performed the land cover classification for each model segment. The purpose of this application is to filter the segment classifications in order to create a map in which the classification of each pixel is for a specific date rather than a model segment. When you run the application, you should see a screen like this. The only box you need to fill in is the path to the asset created in the land cover classification application. That's the, the stack of segment classifications. And so I'll post a link to this asset in the description below as well. So when you click run, you should see some more options that are filled in. Um, just a quick note on um, this segment classification asset. Um, so I have this open in another browser. Um, so this was, as I said, this was exported in the land cover classification application. Um, and there's some information in the metadata, and including the, the change coefficients or the CCDC coefficients um, and some of the formatting of the image. And so these are here so that this land cover application could correctly read in, um, read in the results and use the appropriate coefficient information for the filtering of dates. Okay, so after you load it, all, all, the only options you have here have to do with um, what dates you want to create a map for and optionally um, what change classes you want to create. So to create um, layers of land cover classification that date, different dates, you simply input the dates into this box here. And so by default, there's January 1st, 2001. Um, you could put in any date within your study period and it will create an additional band in the output for that, uh, the classification at that date. So you separate them by commas here. I'll just put in some random dates in our study period. Um, I'll do three. 2012, I don't know, random dates. And so when we run this, you know, as I said, one of three of the, the output layers will be um, classifications for 2001, January 1st, um, June 8th, 2009, and November 10th, 2012. And so we could just run this to see what it looks like first. As you'll see, the, the map moves to the area of Cambodia that we've been working in. Um, and you'll see that a couple layers are added. Um, there's the classification for each of these dates. And then there's a hill shade that's added on top uh, with only partial transparency. I just feel like this gives a little bit of context to the images. But you can turn that off, off if you wish. So because we didn't tell the application what the different uh, classification labels are, you know, the pixel values, um, it just chooses a random color palette. We could optionally, in here in the visualization parameters, give it a legend or about the, the classes. So for us, it's forest, water, herbaceous, and develop. And then you could also give it um, the colors for each of those, uh, those labels. So I'll do dark green for forest, blue for water, yellow for herbaceous, and gray for developer. Now I'll try clicking run again. And you'll see that there is now a legend that's added to the map. Um, and there the classes are styled accordingly. Um, the final bit that you could do with this application is create maps of change. Uh, so that's in this section here for to add a change band, an optional change band. And so first you want to specify the date that the beginning and end dates uh, to calculate change between. So if I were to do uh, January 1st, 2001 and December 31st, 2019, this is calculating the change, land cover change between 
these two time periods. Um, the next boxes are to classify what, or to tell it what classes um, to calculate the change between. So for us, because forest is labeled one, if we put one here in the from box, and then do two, three, and four in the two box, what this is doing is calculating between 2001 and 2019, the change between um, forest to any other class. You know, if we just want to do change to say herbaceous, we would do just one to three, for instance. But this is calculating all forest change. So let's look at this when we click run. Oh, and I should add also, you could specify how this is labeled in the legend. And this also controls the, the output band name. So I'll do deforestation and we can leave it at red. So we'll turn off everything but the deforestation and put on the satellite layer for a little bit of context. And so what we see here, everywhere labeled in red, is what is mapped as being um, forest to non-forest over our study period. Now we could also do the inverse. So uh, where is there fair forest growth or the conversion of a non-forest class to uh, forest? And so the from class would be two, three, or four, and the two class would be one for forest. Um, and we'll just want to change the class name so we don't get confused to forest growth. And so now these red pixels in here is what's getting mapped as forest growth. And so you could do this for any classes in your legends. Um, this will output um, a multiple bands image, one band for each of your land cover classifications, and then one change band according to uh, what you specify here. This completes the CCDC video tutorials. I should note that we've also created an API for doing all this without the interfaces, and instructions for doing which could be found in the CCDC module in the OpenMRV suite of tools. Thanks.